Canva is my favorite graphic design app. I've been using it for years to create my YouTube thumbnails, ebook covers, and so much more. And I've learned a ton of different ways to make things faster and to make your designs look better over the years. And today I'm sharing them with you, so stay tuned. Hey, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Boss Tip Thursday. Today I'm talking all about Canva. If you're new to Canva, start with the beginner's tutorial that I'll link up in a card here on the left corner and in the description as well. Start with that, but if you're already familiar with Canva, if you've been using it, you know how it all works, then stay tuned because the five tips that I'm going to share with you are going to save you a lot of time and just make your designs look nicer too. But before we jump into the video, if you're new to this channel, first of all, Hello and welcome, I'm Sandra and on this channel I share weekly videos to help you be more productive, get work done and enjoy life too. So if that sounds good to you, make sure to hit that red subscribe button and the bell icon right next to it so that you don't miss another video. The first Canva tip that I have for you is to use those Canva keyboard shortcuts. Now, just like Word and Pages and Excel, all of those programs have these special shortcuts that allow you to do things much faster, so does Canva. And in fact, a lot of the shortcuts are the same as they would be in other programs like Word and Pages and all of that, but there are some that are exclusive to Canva. I'm going to be showing you a little bit of both right now. So I just clicked on any design. Again, I have a bunch of Canva tutorials that will show you from scratch how to create things. So if you're at that step right now, go watch beginner tutorials when you're done with this video to learn more. But I just chose any design right now just to show you the uh, tips and hacks I'm going to be talking about. So this first one, I'm going to go ahead and click on this design and click the letter T on my keyboard and there you go it brings up a bit of text here and that's just a faster way than coming here to this text button on the left panel all you have to do is click the letter T on your keyboard and I'm just gonna go ahead and type in my name here control a will select all of the text for you I increase the size and change the color just so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better I'm gonna go ahead and click on the text again and select it all and then press Control B to make the text bold. Control I to make the text italicized. So those are some quick basic shortcuts that work with other programs and it works here as well. But here's something cool. If you click Alt plus Shift plus B, what will happen is you'll get a border around your text. The border will be the same color as your text but that's something cool and neat to do on the fly. One last shortcut I will show you and then I'm gonna show you where you can find more so that you can learn more shortcuts. And that is to move your elements, whether it's text, whether it's a shape, whether it's a letter or a number, whatever, you can move your elements with the arrows on your keyboard. It doesn't just have to be with your mouse. The good thing about this is that it helps you move items around precisely. Sometimes you want something to be right in the center or something like that, but when you move it with your mouse, it moves over too much and it can be a hassle. So try using your arrows instead because it's more precise. If you click your arrow one time, it'll move over one pixel. But if you click shift plus an arrow, it'll move over 10 pixels at a time. So try those out when you're having trouble adjusting your elements precisely. All right, so those are just some of the shortcuts I'll show you today. But if you want more shortcuts, I will leave a link down below to this infographic created by Canva where it shows you a lot of different options that you can try. So my suggestion is to just print it. This is what I always do with shortcuts to programs. I print it and keep it by me until I learn the ones that I use the most. So it is a time investment to learn shortcuts, but I think that it pays off in the long run by tenfold or more. The next thing I'm going to be showing you is how to move multiple elements at one time. So I created this fake scenario here, just added all these ice creams to the side. If I wanted to move these items over to this side of the design instead, say I put them here and I changed my mind, 
The long way is to move one at a time and readjust them so that they look nice on this end. But there is a faster way to do this, and that is to left click your mouse, hold and drag over the element so that it highlights them. You know they're highlighted when they have this dotted line around them. So they all do. They're ready to go. And all I have to do is shift them over. And it's as simple as that. And of course, if you want them to stay permanently together, you, you would do basically the same thing. Just left click, highlight all of your elements, and then click this group option here. And that way they stay together. When you move one, the other one comes along with it. Up next, how to edit a hidden element. I wish I knew this hack a long time ago because it would have saved me a lot of headaches and a lot of time. As you know, if you use Canva often, once you start adding a lot of elements to your design, it becomes a little bit tricky to do edit. So for example, if I want to edit the cone in the back, it's kind of hard to select it because the other ones are on top of it. So what I used to do was move every design out of the way until I got to that back design, make my edit, and then move everything back where it needs to be. But the easier way to do it is to click on the element that's on top. Click uh, control and then click the down arrow. That will make it so that it's selecting the or it's moving the back cone to the front. So now when I click on here, now it'll click this cone instead of the other one. Then I can make my edits. So I'll go ahead and change the colors up. All right, and now I can go ahead and push it back to the back of the design the same way, control and then the down arrow, so it can go back. The fourth hack is how to score premium templates. As you know, Canva has loads of templates for you to use. All you have to do is customize it with your own text and your own color and you're good to go. A lot of them are free, especially if you have Canva for work the premium account a lot of them are free if you have the free canva account you do have some free options but they're very limited as you know if it has this dollar signal you have to pay a dollar for that template which is still a good price but if you wanted to opt out of paying that dollar you can definitely do so now here's the thing the reason why you have to pay for these templates is because an element with in this template is a premium element so that means only one of these things is a premium element it could be the picture it could be the rectangle a line it could be anything so if you want the template to be free all you have to do is get rid of the paid element to know what the paid element is just go to download and once you go to download, it will show you what you're paying for. So right here, I'm paying a dollar for this portrait of this woman. Now, it's not going to charge you right away. You have to click this purchase and download, but I'm going to X out of it. Now that I know that it's this woman that I'm paying for, I can delete her, add my own photo, and then this template would now be free since I took out the paid element. And to try it, let's go ahead and click download. And as you see, it downloads right away without asking for a payment. So don't be afraid to look through all of these templates that Canva gives you and look at something you like. If you like the way the text is arranged, if you like the colors they use, go ahead and try it. You can still get it for free if you just delete the element that's premium within that template. All right, and final hack is how to find secret backgrounds and elements. When you browse through all these elements that Canva gives you to design, these free photos and grids and frames and all of these wonderful things they have, you may think that that's all they have, that's it. Just what you see is what you get, but not really. If you use this browser to search for things instead, you will find a lot of things you wouldn't find otherwise. So I'm going to go ahead and try this with the word gradient, which I've done it before. You'll get a lot of different backgrounds that you wouldn't get with this background option here. You get a lot more ombre effects, a lot of unique backgrounds. So go ahead and try that. Another thing you can try is photo holder. And this is cool because it's just like grids, but then they also have letters. 
so you can spell your name and then just fill it in with a photo. And then they also have mock-ups of computers and cell phones that you could use. Just try this search box to find what you're looking for. Just type in random words and you'll come up with a lot of unique things that you wouldn't have seen otherwise. All right, and that sums up the five Canva hacks. If you found value in this video, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up. And also hit that share button down below and send this video over to a friend who may need it. And let's continue the conversation in the comments below. Please let me know which of these hacks was your favorite. Let me know if you have any to share with us. And if you have any requests for future tutorials, drop that down in the comments as well. And that's all for me today. I thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you next time.